So, what's going on guys, Kades here, and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the best World of Warcraft class guide in 2024. In general, this game has a lot of unique classes to choose from, but the big question is, what is the right class for you? So, we will take a look at the supports, DPS and tanks, to decide what role and class will suit your playstyle, and dominate the current meta for both PvE and PvP. So, if this sounds interesting to you, then let's get right into it. So then moving over to the first class, and it is the Dead Knight. They like to engage their foes up close and personal, by supplementing swings of their weapons, with dark magic that renders enemies vulnerable or damages them with unholy power. They drag enemies into one-on-one -on -one conflicts, compelling them to focus their attacks away from the weaker allies. To prevent enemies from fleeing them, Dead Knights must remain mindful of their power and pace their attacks properly. Overall, as far as the Dead Knight roles go, they can be a tank if they use the blood specialization, or become a DPS as a Frost or Unholy. Dead Knights are a hero class, meaning that they can start out with some advantages over other classes. Once Dead Knight finishes their leveling zone and leaves for the wider world, they will emerge with a full set of good quality rare gear and a specific knowledge of how to play their class. Then next up we have the Demon Hunter. By foregoing heavy armor, Demon Hunters capitalize on speed, closing the distance quickly to strike enemies with one-on-one -on -one hand weapons. However, the Lidari must also use their agility defensively to ensure that battles end in their favor. Overall, Demon Hunters can be a DPS, if they focus on the Havoc specialization or become a tank by using the Vengeance. Overall, this is an excellent solo class, which has extremely high mobility, powerful burst, AOV damage and most importantly, a quick cooldown. So then for the third class, we have the All and Mighty Druid. Druids harness their vast powers of nature to preserve the balance and protect life. With experience, Druids can unleash nature's raw energy against their enemies, raining a celestial fury on them from a great distance, by binding them with enhanced vines or ensnaring them with unrelenting cyclones. In general, there are four specializations available to the Druids. The first one is called Balance, which makes you a ranged DPS. Then we have the Feral, where you can become a melee DPS. Then we have the Guardian, which builds you as a strong tank. And finally, we have the Restoration, which, as you guessed, is a healer role. So then for the next class, we have the Evoker. They've been created by the Natalarian, who've been asleep for millennia, within the Jagan Isles. These male-wearing Jaconic casters use their Jagan psychology and then combine power of the five Jagan flights to use the unleashed devastating attacks from a distance or heal wounds from their allies. There are three specializations available to the Evokers. The first one is the Augmentation, which is a support DPS. Then we have the Devastation, that makes you into a ranged DPS. And finally we have the Preservation, which is a healer role. Then for the fifth class we have the Hunter. From an early age, the Call of the Wild jaffs some adventurers from the comfort of their homes into the unforgiving primal world outside. Those who endure become Hunters. By being masters of their environment, they are able to slip like ghosts through the trees and lay traps in the paths of their enemies. Hunters can DPS as all three specializations, which are called Beast Mastery, Marksmanship and Survival. Hunters are one of the iconic classes of World of Warcraft, and among the most popular across the board. And there's a good reason for this. They're one of the best classes for farming, easily soluble across all kinds of content, and good in group play as well. There's very little a hunter cannot manage or escape when necessary. Then for the next one we have the mage. They are students gifted with a keen intellect and unwavering discipline. The arcane magic available to the mages is both great and dangerous, and because of that is only revealed to the most devoted practitioners. To avoid interference with the spellcasting, they wear only cloth armor, but arcane shields and enhancements give them additional protection. To keep enemies at bay, mages can summon bursts of fire to incinerate distant targets and cause the entire areas to erupt, setting groups of enemies ablaze in just a second. In general, mages can DPS as all three specializations, which is the arcane, fire and frost. 
So then moving over to the next one, which is the legendary monk. When the Pandaren were subjected by the Mogu centuries ago, it was the monks that brought hope to a seemingly dim future. Restricted from using weapons by their slave masters, these Pandaren instead focuses on harnessing their chi and learning weaponless combat. Monks have three specializations, which is a leather-bearing tank that combines damage smoothing, a fluid-based rotation, tons of mobility, and a powerful collection of offensive and defensive cooldowns. Then we have the Mistweaver, who is a melee-based healer that is able to heal our allies and deal damage to our enemies from a centralized location. From this position, we are able to use our high mobility to dodge enemy attacks by using either way abilities that directly affect our movement itself or spells that can be cast while moving, allowing us to continue healing while we reposition. And finally, the Windwalker, who is a dual wielding or two-handed using leather-bearing damage specialization with a mix of damage reduction, self-healing, high mobility and enemy control. So then for the next class we have the Paladin. Paladins are very versatile since they are one of the classes that can fill all three major roles. They are incredibly sturdy, able to take on large groups without much worry about their own survivability. They aren't the fastest levelers, but they can take on solo content and be welcome in group play as well. They have three specializations. The first one is Holy Paladin, which is a one-handed weapon, shield and a plate-wearing healer with a wide range of damage reduction and defensives. They specialize in healing specific targets. Then the second one is Protection Paladin, which will give you access to Will the Light to support your allies and smite your foes. Protection Paladin is a spec that is good for players that enjoy a classic tank combined with the ability to self-heal considerable damage and support your allies. And finally, we have the Retribution Paladin, who are the Holy Crusaders, who use two-handed weapons to turn the power of the light into powerful damaging abilities and bring justice and vengeance to their enemies. This is the DPS role for the Paladin and is a melee spec, although it has few abilities that can be cast from range as well. So then for the next one we have the Priest. They can either way be a healer or a damage dealer. Healing priests are in high demand for dungeon groups and raids, both for their healing and added utility. Many people who choose to level as a priest create at least a secondary spec as a healer to get into dungeon groups faster, although shadow priests are welcome to join as DPS as well. It's just that there is more competition for DPS slots, since damage dealers far outnumber tanks and healers. The first spec is Discipline and Holy Priest, who is a masterful raid-wide burst healer with absorbs and damage reduction utility. They prepare for incoming damage by marking players, with helpful buffs that allow the disciplined priests to deal substantial damage to the boss to create healing on those marked allies. And then the second option is the Shadow Priest, who are ranged clawed DPS specialization with a mix of direct damage and damage over time spells. This spec predominantly focuses on dealing shadow damage, and most of its defensive capabilities are linked with self-healing. Priests in general are very slow, and Shadow is no exception. With no baseline displacement or movement abilities, you will have to plan movement in encounters ahead of time, as well as use few kiting tools that you have available to their maximum advantage. Then for the 10th class we have the Rogue. They like to cheat, and I say this as a player who is mained as a bloody rogue since Burning Crusade. The ability to stealth past enemies, crowd control them out of stealth, and get straight to the meat of the quests means that you will progress more quickly than other players because you can bypass a lot of trash on the way. Although this can be a double-edged sword, as skipping mobs in this way also means that you are missing out on valuable experience and loot along the way. Rogues can only go DPS, as assassins, outlaws or subleti. Assassination Rogue is a dual building, leather bearing DPS specialization, which specializes in damage over time effects. This powerful nature and bleed based damage is augmented by a full arsenal of cooldowns to further assassinate any enemies in our way. Then, for one of the last classes, we have the Shaman. They act as moderators among the earth, fire, water, and air. Shamans summon totems that focuses the elements to support the shaman's allies or punish those who threaten them. They have three specializations. The elemental is a male-wearing ranged DPS caster 
with many great spell effects and different flavors of abilities, wielding nature, fire and frost spells to damage their opponents. We can even use staffs or one-handed maces, and depending on our builds, switch between different modes, like very sturdy or very mobile, depending on the encounter. Then the second one is the Enhancement Shaman, which is a high-intensity melee spec that involves juggling many different abilities and effects to deal damage at a fast pace. Their main focus involves using elemental infused melee strikes, which are consumed to cast a powerful spell. And finally, we have the Restoration Shaman, who calls upon healing properties of the water and their iconic totems to keep their group members alive, using mana as their primary resource. So then the next class is the Warlock. They are a DPS caster class that focuses on enslaving demons and using dark magic energies to curse, dot and destroy their enemies. Despite some differences in playstyle, Warlock specs are all very strong, leveling specs able to handle a variety of content, with some protection and extra damage afforded by their chosen demons. With improved access to self-healing and passive damage reductions in Shadowlands, Warlocks are stronger than ever in the solo leveling field. Warlocks are one of those classes that can often take on groups of quests solo, as well as take on tough single target mobs that will challenge the other classes. Warlocks can DPS as all three specializations, which are the Affliction, Demonology and Destruction. And then for the last and final class we have the Warrior. For as long as war has raged, heroes from every race have aimed to master the art of battle. Warriors combine strength, leadership and a vast knowledge of arms and armor to wreak havoc in glorious combat. They have some protection front lines with shields, locking down enemies while allies support the warrior from behind with a spell and a bow. Others forego the shield and unleash their rage at the closest threat with a variety of deadly weapons. You aren't going to go far wrong picking any warrior spec. Warriors are one of those iconic classes in World of Warcraft and any race can become a warrior with the ability to put on a shield and tank a dungeon as the protection. Overall, a warrior who wants to level through dungeons will always be welcomed and that's about it. So with that said, I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or feedback, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support the channel and not miss any more amazing content. With that said, you have an amazing day and I will see you in my next video. So take it easy. Peace.